everybody fascinated for this chat today around the evolving world of enterprise IT and what's next with Herb from Myriad360. Herb, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Evan? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining. I know you're on the road in New York City meeting some of your amazing clients. Before that, maybe introduce yourself. You have quite a storied background and bio. And um, how did you find your way to Myriad 360? Uh, well, first off, Herb Hogue, and I have been in technology over 30 years. I started my career way back when, uh, you know, in the early uh, or late early 90s and went through and I was an engineer, uh, an architect. I've been a CIO. Um, and then I decided to, and that was all on uh, the customer side. So I built data centers, I ran IT organizations, um, grew through the, the first internet bubble and uh, learned a lot. And then I decided to grow and drive and build consulting organizations, service organizations uh, with uh, solution partners. And I've been doing that for pretty close to 15 plus years now um, and I've and I've done that with uh, cloud organizations data center networking companies uh, dev devops organizations um, security uh, etc and that that long plight has led me to myriad 360 and which I'm really excited to be a part of because at myriad not only am I getting to leverage all of those skills, but we are also very relevant in the AI uh, infrastructure space. So, you know, that's a culmination. And obviously with what everything's going on in the industry, it's this is a, a great time. A great time, an exciting time indeed. And how do you describe Myriad 360 today? You do so much, you a solution provider, MSP, uh, a value added uh, uh, provider of sorts, but. You, d you describe it. I don't think I'm doing a fair job. Sure. We are a AI infrastructure company, a cloud mm -hmm. uh, solution uh, company. We also do data center services and solutions as well as security. Those are our key focus domains. Um, and anything that is adjacent to them, we generally are supporting. And we're, and, and, we're, and we're a 22-year-old company. You can't say that about tech these days much. So you work with real industry heavyweights, who's who, from Microsoft to Cisco, AWS, lots of emerging players as well. Uh, you know, what have you learned about building these partnerships and ecosystems over the years, the decades? Yeah, great question. I think the most challenging is that in the data center space, you, you have more stability in the partner landscape because you have more larger, more established. Yes, you have disruptors that come in, um, but that space has been relatively consistent with which partners are there, um, whether that be Dell or HPE or NetApp or, or Pure, companies like that. Mm. On the security landscape, it has been much, much more disruptive. Um, there is uh, a lot of net new niche security component players that come out daily and the rate of change of those toolings, uh, as well as their uh, applicability with certain use cases is constantly moving. Uh, and as the threat landscape continues to evolve, especially now with AI, that landscape is just moving all the more faster. So that has been something that I think is a challenge to, for, from a client perspective, but also for a partner, just to maintain awareness and visibility of that rate of change. Um, and then obviously AI has thrown a, a, a big wrinkle in everything. Um, so you layer that over top and, you know, in my career, I've never seen as much disruption um, in any hype cycle as I'm seeing right now. To say the least, yeah, AI is dominating the headlines, but beneath the headlines, let's talk about what's really happening in Agentic and Gen AI. You know, how do you see it from your bird's eye view, you know, reshaping IT infrastructure, operations, even leadership roles? Well, I think 
you know, we're obviously still in the very, very early innings. But what I think is unique about this hype cycle is we went from hype to starting to see it actually take hold um, in a very short window of time. When you compare that to the the cloud move or other moves that we've seen, those have took much, much longer to mature. Um, so that's one thing. Um, organizations are much more open to looking at it. I think the biggest challenge that uh, companies are having is not with AI functionality within existing tools. Mm. Lots of the providers have done a very good job adding AI functionality to their existing tool sets. What clients are struggling with is taking AI rawly and applying that to build and develop their own scaling tool sets. That mm. has been more of a challenge uh, because the experience and the talent to do that is not like it has been in other hype cycles. It is very, very limited when you say, I want to leverage an LLM and build a, you know, a, a bespoke or a custom application to do my certain type of business. That's, that's a much heavier lift. So, you know, how do I see that manifesting itself in the short term? I see that really affecting uh, observability. I really see that affecting uh, in the infrastructure space, applying across massive amounts of data to get to actions more quickly. Today, a lot of the data consumption that has been done has been static with you know tertiary reporting and, and filtering. But now when you can take that data in mass and apply across several different data points, you can get to actions much more quickly, whether that be in security or, or infrastructure. So I see all of those areas being the earliest ones to gain value from, um, which you know helps us with the get to an answer more quickly uh, or a response more quickly or an action more quickly. I think those will be and are from everything that we're seeing, the areas that clients are looking to first. Great insight. And so with the AI workload surging, you have these new hybrid work modalities and new applications. Um, you're deeply involved in the underlying network and infrastructure strategies. How do we adapt? I mean, we just can't throw more and more infrastructure at this problem. Uh, the data centers will be full. What new new thinking needs to happen to to shift the mindset and the architecture? Yeah, that's another good one. You know, and I think about this one daily. You know, yes, the infrastructure, the core infrastructure is growing uh, at a pace we've never seen before. No question about that. But I also see the edge evolving. And when I think of edge, I think of that in twofold. The near edge, um, which is from not just your, your access point, I use that term lightly, um, but also your device. I think as AI matures, and we're already starting to see the technology be able to do this, you're going to be leveraging AI in a, in a two-step fashion. You'll have local AI of some sort within the application or the function or whatever you're doing. Uh, you'll, you may have you know, near AI, and then you may have hardcore AI um, you know, for deeper research, greater data sets, et cetera. And what does that give you? Well, that gives you uh, more speed to response, number one. That gives you more tailored experience for the individual, but it also reduces uh, latency and network load uh, of parsing and driving significant amounts of data. And I think you're going to see that continue to evolve. You'll see that evolve with applications. And I, I don't think we'll go back to fat apps of the old but I think we'll be in some type of hybrid element of that where companies will be able to have or, or architects will be able to have a local AI, AI uh, minim, minimum model and then the, the heavier model for the deep research. And, and you already have the interfaces to do that today, but it'll be a little more elegant uh, in that construct. Awesome. And the other balancing act, I think, are people are trying to manage is technical debt, the legacy systems deployed over decades and all of these new cloud first AI first applications. 
uh, that are sexy, but, um, y- you know, uh, a challenge to deploy widely. How do you find the right balance between the old and the new? That's a that's an ever evolving chain challenge. Mm-hmm. I think cloud has helped with some of that, right? Um, and you know most organizations are in some type of hybrid construct today. I think as you know the initial phase of cloud adoption has taken place, a lot of that consumption has been taking place in the uh, hyperscalers um, and you know the service provider space because it's mm-hmm. readily available and easy to digest. And you don't need, you don't have the heavily technical uh, talent cost of trying to get that established. Um, I think over time, as that tech debt rolls off, and maybe there is sensitivity to data, uh, industry specific data requirements. We're in the, again, we're in the early innings, and I think data, you know, the data um, governance rules haven't fully been matured to digest the impacts of da- of AI and how AI stores data, but I think those will also mature rapidly. Um, EU is usually a leader in that space, so we'll probably see more and more enhancement, which will then dictate where things need to be um, I- as far as the governance models. But I think it'll be a, tr- a transition. And you know, the, the, the uplift cost is very heavy, but I think the first place you'll start to see it will be on the client side, because that's the lowest cost. Um, again, back to those other architectural enhancements that will happen, which enable it. Great point. Uh, AI is forcing us to rethink everything from our skill sets to upskilling and education, learning, um, how to invest in our people with these tools. Maybe describe internally some of the challenges and opportunities you see with your team of you know consultants and network engineers and architects and the whole crew um how are you changing your approach to work and working with clients great question you know i think back to that earlier point i made around uh the rate of change you know we the amount of talent that is ai fluent is limited um yes there are folks out there that can use chat gpt sure but that's that's not building it. That's not you know employing it for massive scale and business value. And what we have done um, is invest heavily on training folks, but also working uh, with our clients in the trenches, building, developing solutions, which has given us a several year head start um, with mm-hmm. infrastructure um, and how AI has evolved from you know two to three years ago which i know that doesn't sound very long but in the <laughs> ai hype cycle you know we started you know infrastructure with just air cooling and you know four nodes per rack to now high density you know two ton racks um deployed with liquid cooling right and that transition happened rather quickly um in 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 it terms so we've been fortunate to have that hands-on experience and the softwares uh, and the cabling requirements, the infrastructure requirements that come along with that. And we have spent a lot of energy trying to train our folks on our specific focus areas. I think it's easy to become inundated with trying to learn everything and that's just not scalable. Uh, there's You don't have enough human beings to know everything in the rate with the rate of change. So, you know, we focused very hard on AI and cloud and AI infrastructure and the AI infrastructure operations plane uh, as our areas of of expertise, um, because that's adjacent to the things that we do very, very well. Fantastic. Uh, You are on the road now. I appreciate you taking the time out to join me. What are you excited about as we head into the busy fall event season? and uh the myriad of client things and meetups and uh uh uh, road shows happening we have a as always a a very extensive schedule of things going on um from nanogs to our client celebration events um, our engineering training events that we're doing and representation at all the major uh conferences out there so that that's always 
uh, something of excitement. I think SplunkCon is going on right now uh, <laughs> up in Boston. We have folks there as well. Um, but when I look at the bigger picture, uh, the most exciting thing is, you know, the next level of AI uh, maturity and adoption. And we're in the early stages, and again, of that adoption. And more and more clients are becoming more comfortable with how to consume it. Um, and the business value that it can bring and, you know, where we're playing in that early stages and the work that we do with the very, very largest of service providers, we're fortunate to be in that space, helping them grow and mature and accelerate uh, and identify and, and support their needs. So that's, you know, that's, it's fun to be on the inside of a hype cycle um, and, you know, seeing it happen real time. Um, so you know, that's the part that I'm most excited about as, as I look at, you know, where we are and what's going on. Fantastic. Um, and just looking at your LinkedIn profile, I noticed you spent over a decade, dozen years in the Army National Guard. Uh, thank you for your service. Lots of uh, uh, news today around the Guard. Uh, won't get into that, but um, you must have learned some interesting lessons uh, over that journey that you carry with you. Well, I, I learned, you know, a couple. Uh, the first is uh, improvise, adapt, overcome. Right? You're gonna, you know, in our in our world, in in this industry, you're you're going to have problems. It's you're not going to prevent every one of them. Things are going to happen. And how to you can you adjust and think creatively and get around those? And that was um, something that was extremely important for me. Uh, in early in my life. And then I would say the other one is provide a vision and empower people. Um, trying to, especially in this type of day and age, trying to micromanage or manage every element of people's activity is extremely difficult to do and taxing. And if you can get a small group of people to identify with the, the vision and the true north of what you're trying to accomplish, and you have consistency and trust, they can move much more quickly than a larger organization and more effectively with a higher quality. And that's the other thing that I, I take away from that period of time. And I've been fortunate to leverage those things. And, and you know, though we are uh, a, you know, a 22 year old company, we're you know, a good size company, but we're obviously not thousands and thousands of people, but that enables us to move quickly with the market conditions and, and also myself with the market conditions as, as life has thrown interesting paths in front of me. Well, wonderful vision and mission and congratulations on all the success. Look forward to checking in uh, and see how things are going next year. Thank you very much, Evan, for uh, the time and look forward to doing this again with you. Thank you, and thanks everyone for listening, watching, and sharing this episode. Be sure to check out our sister TV show, Tech Impact TV on Bloomberg and Fox Business. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Herb. Thank you. Take care.